Okay. Um, I think class classroom. Classroom. Is it? How many are you in all? I'm saying no, we have two, two, three. Yeah, two, two, three. All right. Um, in fact, we can't wait for the others. I'll take attendance today. All right, so let, let's start. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm sure most of you will not really see me. Yeah, if you can hear me, let, just let me know. Hello? Hello, Hello sir. sir. Great. I think oh. that's a good thing. Hello, sir. Yeah, sir. Uh, okay. That is a very good sign. So quickly, we're going to start with today's lecture. Well, we're supposed to have met, um, I think, last week. And as of now, we still have... Hello, sir. Table. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. All right. I'm going to mute everybody. And uh, when it's time for me, to, when I ask a question, I would unmute. So I'll give you the chance to unmute. All right. So as I said, we were supposed to have met last week. Unfortunately, we had issues with the timetable. And as we speak, we still have issues. Now, um, we're going to start with today's. And what I'm going to do is to in introduce exactly what computer graphics is and what it particularly means. There are so many, you know, um, diverse ways people have different definitions of computer graphics, what it is and all. I will explain these details to you. I'll try to also give you a bit of information of what the course will cover. And we will do a quick overview of how the semester is going to be how the, we're going to, the practical section, how I'm going to give you the kind of exercises and quizzes that I, I'll give you and all of that. I'm going to talk about that. And finally, I'll give you a little bit of information about um, the assignments um, that will go on during the course. Now, um, as you can see, the course code is CA273. I advise you take the course, Seriously, it's a two credits hour course. Um, unfortunately, it involves a lot. I am told you have you've done web programming in first year. So there are certain things that I will talk about as we move on. Now let's start with today's activity. So at the end of this class, but generally at the end of this course, um, a student should be able to create um, 2D and also 3D objects. So there will be more concentration on the 3D. And the reason being now we've moved away from 2D. Most of the things that we do are realistic enough. And for us to be realistic, we normally create models or objects that are 3D. So these are the fundamental, these are the basic things that you learn. You learn the fundamentals of computer graphics with it algorithm some basic real-time rendering and also graphics hardware. Um, you will have an idea of what the basic web GL is. This course is going to be centered on web GL. And the good thing is um, web GL is somehow similar to open GL um, by Microsoft. Um, web GL also works on graphic, um, graphic, the graphic process, um, GPU, process units, processing units. So just like the OpenGL, we are going to delve into WebGL. And the good thing is there is a library which I will normally use, and I think for some time now, that is what we've been using, which we call the A-Frame, and that is available. A-Frame is built on OpenGL, which is, is built on WebGL which is um, most of the time done in the web browser. Most of the things that we do will be centered on the web browser. So we're going to use A-Frame for this course. Other people also have different... Um, the previous years, I was using the OpenGL, but I realized 
And most students had issues. It was a little technical difficult for them, even with the installation. And because we were doing web, and you have done web in first year, it's a good opportunity to introduce the web GL. Um, forgive me, it's supposed to be web GL instead of um, what you see here. Just a minute. Yes, correct. It's um, plus. All right, so, yeah, so these are the things that we are not going to do. We are not going to talk about OpenGL and the direct X hacks. Uh, we are not going to use any software like Blender, Toon Boom, Harmony. We're not going to use uh, this software, AutoCAD. We're not going to use AutoCAD too as well. Um, do all your technical drawing, you might have used AutoCAD. If not, maybe they made you do use the hardware, or, you know, your drawing boards and the rest. And for this, because you are computer science students, um, everything that we do needs to be scripted and programmed. Let me put it that way. So that is why we are using the WebGL. We are not really also going to be doing artistic, artistic skills. By this, I mean, we are not going to be drawing humans on, on paper using your brush and the paints and stuff like that, no. And finally, we are also not going to design a game. Of course, after this, you can also learn, um, go beyond what you have taught here and use it to create possibly some game design. And that is the choice that you probably would, would, would take. So for the purposes of this, we will be delving much with the WebGL. Now, um, this is how the course presentation will be. I'm sure these things are things that we normally talk about because we want you to have an idea what we will do for the semester. And every lecturer will talk about it. We don't want a situation where the, the lecturer didn't tell us that this is how the grading system is going to be and all of that. And this is max. So we always try to quickly recap some of these things. So we will hold most of our lectures on the BLE. And the tutorials will be held in class. Um, that is the software lab. Um, I'll talk about it in the next slide. Um, the practical or the programming labs, these are the things that we will do. I'm going to give you a handout, which will be in a software um, in a soft copy. You choose to print it or not, that is your choice. This handout will be on the VLE. All course materials are put on the VLE. Our lecture times are on Monday, um, 10 to 12, and I think 12.30 to 2.30. Unfortunately, between 12.30 and 2.30, we have an issue. Um, so um, this is what I told the classroom. Um, 10 to 12, I'm supposed to meet A, group A, and 12.30 to 2.30, I'm supposed to meet group B. So what I'm, I intend doing is to combine group A and B at 10 to 12 noon on Monday on VLE. So we we'll hold that one on the VLE, just like what we're doing right now. Then the other part, which is supposed to be um, 12.30 to 2.30, will be held, um, so I would use that opportunity to record um, videos for the practicals, which I will expect you to go through those practicals, use those practicals, um, set up your lab. Then during the lab session, which is on Friday, I don't know, I think there is another one, for A, B, C, D, the lab session, what I'm going to do is um, you will watch the video, then you make sure you set it up during a practical session. I'll go around to see what you've done. When I record a video for the practical, I expect you to, I'll give assignments. I expect you to go through it and do the assignment. And anytime I come to class, I'll probably come in to mark the assignment. So please take note. Um, this is very important. I would want you to do that. Um, with this said, I was still would inquire. I already have told the classroom, but I will, I still would want to find out from the class if you agree. 
Um, so quickly, let me see. Just give me just a minute. Okay, so please quickly um, please quickly fill this pool for me. Let me be certain before I move on to the next slide. Um, what I want to know is um, I want to find out if you are okay with the VLA combined class on on Monday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. If you are okay, just say agree. Good, we have about 129 people in here. So quickly, let's try and answer this poll. And Um, I'll say it again. Um, from 12.30 to 2.30, there is a clash with Dr. Nopong's practical. As of now, we have not been able to resolve that. So what I intend doing is, during that time, I will record a practical session for the A-frame, which you would have access on the VLE. What you do is, um, right after the practical video session that I will record and put there, I will add an assignment. So you go through it, you do the assignment, then during our practical session, I'll come over, check what you have done, mark the assignment and complete the process. And you should be mindful that, um, for the practical session, for every week, we meet just once. And for A-frame, if we are to use A-frame, the software and the other things that we need for A-frame, the moment I step in class, the installation and even telling you one or two things for the practical, by the time you realize one hour is gone. So you should be mindful of that too. And you just have one hour to do the practical. So I personally think a video will be good for you. And if you still don't agree, just let me know. 
All right, so I think I have um, the final poll here. Let me just put it out for, okay. We have some few people also answering. Let's wait for about a minute, then we'll continue. We still have less than, we have a little over 50% of the class here. So if you can hear me, check your phone and make sure you've seen, you've answered the poll that I just put across. All right, those that do not, okay. Um, I think this will be enough for now. All right, so, um, so I'll end the poll. And let me share the results with you. So we are all on the same page. Okay, so from here, about um, you have about 91% of you who agree that um, the VLE lecture, which is happening just like today, is okay. And we have just about 11 people who say they don't agree. Please, those that don't agree, send me a private message. You can just text it to me. You can text it over. I'll try to understand. Um, and the practicals, almost about 92% agree. All right, if you don't, you, if you want to send me a message, um, I think that is okay. All right, let's continue with activity, today's activity. All right. So, yeah. So for the, from now, we were going to put up, I'll put up the practicals online for you to have access to all the practicals and the exercises that I'll give. All right, so all materials will be loaded on the VLE. Um, if I give you an assignment and I expect you to upload, you know how the VLE works. If there is a time frame, you do an upload of an assignment and you don't do it. It goes against you. All right, so those of you who would want to find me, um, my office is in the Espex building, School of Petroleum, room number five, and that is my phone number. These are my research areas and Unfortunately, um, Imanolobu is not around. I would let you know of the new TA in the course of the semester. So you get to know who the TA is. So attendance, as you already know, is 10. Now I would always set up um, the classes online on the VLE, the Zoom classes on the VLE. And I will expect you to come in yourself. Don't come in like Ajwa, um, Ajikum, and Godfred Aka. I will not mind you. I'm going to use the attendance on the Zoom, the time you come in and the time you leave to give the attendance. If you just log in and you leave, I will know. Um, the system is able to keep track of all of that. So that is what I'm going to use for attendance. So don't think all of you are going to get 10 of 10. If you don't come to class and you are not within in, the, in class, you are in trouble. You will not get the 10 marks. Continuous assessments, as you already know, will be 30 marks. Um, we will have one or two presentations. There will be an um, individual presentation, and that most of the time will be the practical session. There, there will be a group presentation too. I'll give you a topic and I'll expect you to come and present in the form of a group. I'll put you in a group. We'll have quizzes. Um, we'll have practical labs too as well. Most of the quizzes that you are going to do will be online. Virtually all the quizzes that you do will be online. And it will be MCQ, multiple choice questions. The exams as it stands now tentatively is going to be either MCQs or practicals. I'm yet to make the final decision. In the course of the semester, I'll let you know. These policies, you already know, cheating is not allowed. Um, I'll give you the PowerPoint slides. Now, let's delve much into um, the kind of things that we're going to use for the practical session. Now, um, the software that we're going to use is the Visual Studio Code. Before it was the Adobe bracket. 
Uh, but unfortunately, Adobe Brackets, which was the code editor that we used at that time, has been purchased um, by Microsoft and they are now using. So now Visual Studio Code is what we are going to use. And it looks very similar. Those that are very conversant with Notepad++ plus, plus, and also um, um, brackets, you can still have the old version of the brackets installed and used. Um, we can also use Notepad++, plus, plus, which is also OK for this particular class. We are going to use a web server. And the reason is um, with WebGL, specifically A-Frame, um, it's always requires that you run on an HTTPS uh, on a web server. So most of the things that you do, if you don't put it in a web server, um, you will have issues. You might not be able to see things rightly as um, it should be. Um, use ZAMP. Those that have used WAMP, I'm sure you know what WAMP or ZAMP is. Those are the web servers that we will use. It will go along with these browsers. Um, as I said, um, Adobe Brackets partnered with Microsoft and that they have come out with the Visual Studio. So let's use the Visual Studio. I would advise you get it downloaded for these. I'm sure most of you already have it downloaded. Now let's delve in today's activity. What is computer graphics? Where does it appear? Computer graphics technology, why is it so pervasive now? I'm going to unmute all of you and I will inquire anybody who would want to answer. To answer, what do you, what's, what's your idea of computer graphics, if I may ask any of you? Yes. Aaron, Aaron Arthur, Aaron Arthur. Aaron Atta. Okay. Aaron, Aaron Atta. All right. So if I call you and you don't respond, I think that is one of the things I should, I will let you know. Means you are not in class, you are just roaming around somewhere. So it's just it's more like you are absent. So that is Aaron. He has vanished. Okay, that's good. All right. Um Frida, Frida Bugri, can I can we hear you? You can unmute yourself, Frida. Just tell me what you think computer graphics is. Frida. All right, anyone who would want to Tell us what she thinks, yeah. Uh, so I'll do. My, my next one is my next one. Yes, can I um, hear you? The idea of an object is using the computer to generate art or images. Well, just tell me what you think it is. There is no right or wrong answer. Guess what you think. Yes, Kelvin. Kelvin Amwaba. Kelvin, you have the floor. You can your hands are raised. Yeah. Kelvin. Can you hear me? Can yes. you hear? Yeah. Harrison, we can hear you. The, the use of computer to process and render images. 
That's great. So computer entertainment. Uh, okay, this is what I'll do. Um, yeah, Andrew, Andrew Hills, you can unmute yourself. What do you think computer graphics is? Say, say, computer, computer graphics. It deals with the generating images and the ads with the help of computers. Okay, well, that's that's great. Bernard, do you have any other thing to say, Bernard Ephraim? You can unmute yourself and talk. Yes, Bernard. Okay, so um, I think most of you have been able to say something. So I believe um, we can all think of different places where computer graphics appear. Um, you know of, most of you are aware of the fancy blockbuster movies and video games that are available. Um, there are certain software or there are certain things that are being done to help the creation of these games and also these blockbuster movies. Um, but the unfortunate thing is, um, in reality, most of the graphics is one of the, um, most of the graphics that is being displayed are not the actual thing. You know, they try to find ways to let us, um, to get us fooled in a way. And I'm sure most of you have also seen the green screen of some of these movies, blockbuster movies and the rest. I'm sure there is one video that I would want you, I would want you to, I will show you. Um, but now let's talk about, I think some of you have actually said what computer graphics is. I would want to explain and also delve a little bit into it. Yes, anytime you think of computer graphics, you should have this in mind. It describes the use of computers to create and also mani manipulate images. So if you have, um, a computer and you are just doing editing, it doesn't necessarily fall under computer graphics. An example is Photoshop. Um, you can use it to do some few things, but um, anytime we talk of computer graphics, we will need a computer to, um, to actually draw something or create something by either programming or telling it what to do. Um, that is what computer graphics really um, is about. So it describes the use of computer to create or manipulate images. And this is the textbook definition, the other definitions. In the exams, I expect you to bring out something similar to this. Now, I've realized that most times when I say, when I ask the question, what is computer graphics? Students tend to just give a definition without giving a little explanation. And they end up not really getting the format. I'm, I think this is the first time I'm telling a class or a group of students. So please, there is a difference between define or state or what is. Know how to explain certain things. So in the act of drawing pictures, um, lines, charts, this relates to computers by the use of um, computer itself. Most of the time we use what we use for the drawing of these objects are either the CPU or the GPU. The GPU is most of the time the preferred, the preferred one. And, and the reason is it's able to do processing of um, these images in terms of the creation at a very faster rate. CPU is unable to do that at a faster rate. So those of you that are into Bitcoin mining, you can attest the fact that um, if you want to mine Bitcoin, you would have to get a computer with a very high specification, a computer with a good GPU, 
Um, and the reason is GPU is able to process information at a very high speed, at a faster rate. So in the same vein, when we talk of computer graphics, the creation of these pictures and also lines and charts also require um, the use of a processing power. So GPU is also one of the best uh, things that was normally used for these creations. And also, most of you would also bear with me that um, to be able to play any of these um, recent or modern games on a computer, you need a computer which is robust enough with a very good GPU. Um, you can run maybe San Andreas or some other computer, um, computer game, FIFA 2022 on a very bad computer. It will pinch or lag along the line. You will not really feel how the, um, how the game really plays out. So um, it is the art of drawing pictures, lines, charts, etc. on the computer on the computer screen by using programming languages. So our case will be scripting certain things on the and telling the GPU to use those to create those objects for us. So in computer graphics, objects are presented as a collection of discrete picture elements. So just like your phone, if you, I ask you to pick a picture on your phone, you realize that the picture that you see, when you try stretching the picture, uh, increasing the size of the picture, it gets to a point that it stops. And at that point, if the picture quality is not so good, you can see the picture pixelating. The term pixelating comes from pixels. By pixelating, I mean to say, you see the smallest element of the picture. That is where you see the color, the colors RGB. Um, when you zoom in, you keep zooming in. Even now, if you zoom me myself in, or zoom the, what do you call it? The lecture slide in, you will see that it gets to a point, maybe um, a picture, the picture will pixelate. You see some dots, dots, dots in there. That is the pixel. So a pixel in actual fact forms the building block of any object that most of the time is created on a computer screen. And that is um, the smallest unit or the basic units. Um, you should be mindful that there are some key phrases that you should have in mind whenever you, you define what a computer graphic is. Create images, that is representing an image of a virtual world of a graphic object from a specific viewpoint. So in computer graphics, what we do is we create objects in the virtual world, which is normally seen in the computer. And that's objects which is found within the virtual world inside your screen is what is shown on the screen. So if you have an object which is 3D, an object like maybe a ball, which is 3D, you and I can bear with me, um, we we'll attest to the fact that our screen, computer screen, is not a 3D object. So how are we able to perceive an object which is created in, a, in 3D, which is in the virtual world, projected on the screen, um, for us to believe that it is 3D. So that is how works. Um, computer graphics works. There are certain things um, that really goes on there. You should have them. There will be shading. There will be um, the shading of some of the objects, some parts of the objects, and the, the introduction of lights makes it easier for us to believe or trick the eye to believe that Indeed, the object that we are seeing is a 3D object, but in actual fact, it's a 2D object. So anytime you have a, an object in the virtual world, which is in 3D, it always will come, it will be, this can be, it, it always can be displayed on the 2D screen, mainly because of the, um, the physics that's um, going on in there, how reflection light works. Now, um, you should also be mindful that when we talk of computer graphics, it's a little different from um, the, the CGI, which is the computer-generated imagery. Um, in actual fact, 
CGI falls under computer graphics, so it's more, more or less like a subset of it. These two fields are related, that is the computer graphics and also CGI. And in computer graphics, most of the time is the course that normally teaches the principles and the techniques in the creating and also manipulating these visuals. I'm talking about the 2Ds and the 3Ds that are found in a virtual world. But with CGI, most of the time, it refers to the use of a computer software to create these images. When we talk of CGIs, we will use a software to create these images. But with computer graphics, we have to now program the computer to talk to the GPU to help in the creation of these objects. With CGI, we need specific software that will help in the creation of these objects. An example could be um, AutoCAD and, and the rest, and other frameworks that creating um, maybe computer games and the rest. Let me reuse this gentleman. Okay, that is great. Um, I think I have some few questions. Let me just, um, there is this gentleman who says um, he, did, he didn't agree with it, with the VLA class because of network issues. That is fine. Um, what, what I, as I said, these videos would also be recorded. I will put it online. It also will be on the VLA. So you can always visit it and also play whatever we, we, we talked about in class. So you have the chance to also watch the video. Um, if, if you're unable to really hear me most of the time, you have the chance to also listen to the video. Okay. Um, um, other people are also talking about online lectures not being so smooth. Um, all right. Those of you who would have um, those issues, I'll be in the class. Um, for today, I would want to see those people. I for the 12.30 to 2.30 class, I'll be in, in, the, in the class. So you meet me, and if we have to go through this again, I'll go through it with you for today. If you don't show up, then it means you agree with the VL. So I expect to see you in class today from 12.30 to 2.30. All right. If you don't show up, then we'll go VLE all the way. All right. That is great. Um, and as I said, whatever we'll do here, I'll put a video also online and always get it and, and revisit what we talked about. But you have to come to class. That one, you have to be there. Okay, so moving on. So now you know the difference between the CGIs and the computer graphics itself. CGI falls under computer graphics, more, more of a su subset. And then also, um, please let me pick this call. Just a minute. I mean, class, but All right, sorry about it. 
So you know the difference between a CGI is and also computer graphics. Com CGI falls on a computer graphics, and with CGI, we use software to do the, um, the creation of these objects and the visuals. And it's mostly used in the film industry. Um, but of course, it still falls on the computer graphics. So when we talk of computer graphics, um, we would talk about them. But, but the idea is to let you know um, CGIs are also um, rela related to computer graphics. Now, on the still on the, the same slides, um, I said computer graphics also relates to, but different from image processing. That's a little different. Um, with image processing, you have an image, you have a, a way of uh, processing it. And most times we normally use um, the Photoshop. Um, computer vision. So with computer vision, what happens is um, it takes, we can take an image, analyze the image, and also identify who exactly the person is. Um, there is this um, professor in KNUST. I think his PhD was centered on computer vision. And what's really, what, what he did was, um, based on your posture, how you stand, how you walk, he's able to tell, even if he doesn't see your face, that this individual is um, Aaron Arthur or Rafiu Abdullah. So based on, you know, every individual has a way of standing, of posture, or even walking. We are all different in one way or the other. So with computer vision, we were able to, the way to also analyze an image or, or an object and also um, tell us, tell exactly what that particular object is. Um, again, computer graphics is closely also related to interaction or HCI, um, VR, and also visualization. Most times, you know, human computer interaction, I think, or interface, I think you'll be doing it in, I don't know if it's in third year or second semester. It also relates to that. Um, these are graphics, pictures, objects, how these, uh, these things are created. And most times we normally program to come up with this. So all the computers have graphic user interface. Um, the computer that you have, we have the graphic card user interface. In previous years, or in your first semester, first year, you were told that for, um, to be able to talk to a computer, there are two ways. We have the command line interface and the graphical user interface. The introduction of computer graphics helps us get the graphical user interface aspect to be able to talk to a computer. And you should be mindful that, as I said, the screen only projects objects in 2D, but because of the lightning effect and the rest makes us feel those objects are 3D. The screen is 2D, so the object that can come out of it is 2D. The objects that are created within the virtual world with the introduction of the concepts of light makes it possible for us to perceive these objects as 3D. All right. On this screen, um, I have Bridget Adi here. Bridget, on the left side of the screen, you can unmute yourself, Bridget. We have the 2D and also 3D objects. On the left side, where the 2D is, there is something funny going in on there. Can you tell me what it is? Bridget Adi. Um, anyone who sees something fishy going on there can also talk, can unmute itself, um, can raise their hand. I'll give you the chance to unmute so we talk. All right. Um, Asari Ampovo. You can unmute Sir, yourself. the field and the 2D is on both sides. Yeah, that's that's great. So on the left side, we have um, a cube, which ideally is not supposed to be seen there, but we see it in there. So that is the 2D of uh, 3D objects finding itself in the 2D objects. Um, what, what makes it 2D and what makes it 3D? You can raise your hand. 
All right, Samuel. Um, so the light on the object. The light on the object makes it 3D. Is that the only thing? <laughs> Not necessarily. When we say 3D objects, what distinguishes from the 2D objects? Yes, Clement. Yes, because it has two dimensions instead of, and it has three dimensions instead of two dimensions. And what are they? It has length and height. It has the length and height, and that makes it a 3D. Breadth, length, and height. Great, that is true. It has these three. Um, L, um, X, Y, Z, it has these three. That is why um, it, that makes it a, um, a 3D object. That is great. Now on the right side, you can see all the objects that we have in there have the lens, breadth, and height. Um, do you normally see breadth? The X, Y, Z, the yeah, coordinates are all found on the right side. That is what makes it easier to identify it. But for it to look more realistic, that is where the introduction of the light principles come in. And as we move along, um, in the practical section, we will create these objects, especially the ones on the right side. Let me use, um, yeah, in the practical session, these are the basic things that we will create. We'll create a cube cylinder, a cone, these basic stuff. Um, a frame has these primitives that can help us create them. We'll just call on them and we'll, we'll be able to create them. All right, so don't worry. Um, we'll delve into it when we get to the class, um, the practical session. Now, um, sorry. Um, yeah, I believe um, we've talked a bit about some different places where we can, where computer graphics is used or where we can use it. And in the movie industry, uh, it's normally being used. And this movie, um, that is Matrix, you see they have a green screen and they're able to capture, you know, they do virtually everything in the green screen and at the end of the day, they're able to project the object that they have using CGI with to a different background so looking at this one you can see this is the actual thing happening and over here this is the cgi integration that happened again from here to i think i don't know forgotten this movie but most of you i'm sure you are familiar with it so this is also the objects reported to be the dragon where this lady is, you know, stroking the head and Spider-Man too. You see how funny these, you know, gray screen makes things happen. And the ultimate thing, this particular movie, Avatar, you see the lady and how the use of CGI's computer graphic related technologies helps in the creation of these, these um, blockbuster movies and these special effects movies. So generally, when we talk of computer graphics, what usually comes to mind for most of us are in the movie industry. And of course, there are both animated films like the Pixar Dream, which I will show you. And also we have the crazy special effects that can see the Hollywood uh, blockbuster as we can talk about. Finding Nemo, I don't know if any of you have watched it before. That is so beautiful. So there are special software that were used to create this particular um, movie, um, Finding Memo. Um, so these are CGI's that help in the creation of um, these special effects in movies. So um, one of the little subtle things that you should have in mind is um, the aspect that even in the special effects world, some of the graphics that are seen are actually quite difficult to notice. There are some, you know, like this one, for instance, 
you see how it is. It is so difficult to, to believe that um, in actual fact, this is what is happening. You know, the CGIs are so good that um, they come out so nice. It makes it difficult for us to, you know, not believe that these are real. Um, yeah, so that is in the movie industry, that is what is normally, um, that is what normally happens. So I'm going to show you this um, briefly and have a feel, a basic feel of how some of these things have been. Mr. Minutes. Um, those that have watched Grey's Anatomy, uh, I think that is some scenes of Grey's Anatomy. These are Stargate uh, movies. This is also another scene from Grey's Anatomy. So in actual fact, this is what happened. And in fact, we are always being fooled by these gentlemen, uh, these movie makers. I'm hoping to see a Ghanaian movie that integrates uh, heavy CGI's that makes it uneasy to you know notice. Unfortunately, we've not seen. I have not seen any Ghanaian movie um, that incorporates uh, realistic CGI's. It's a short video, I think about two to three minutes, so it will end right on. And yes, in the A-frame class, um, we will be dealing with something similar. You know, we will have we will have a very nice background panorama, then. Within it, we will have objects um, placed in there. So we have something not similar, something similar to some of these using a frame. So just brace yourself and um, let's have fun in the computer graphics class, especially with the practical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hero. Those that have watched heroes also, I think this is a character in there. All right, so those that would want to see more of these videos, um, there are lots on YouTube, you can check it out. So the first one where that we talked about is in the movie industry, where computer graphics usually works. And also in the gaming environment to um, games like Grand Theft Auto and all 
um, also incorporates part of um, computer graphics. And most of these games are motivated um, mainly by modern graphic technology that we see today. And specifically, you know that the graphics card, which is sitting on the computer, is one of the important things that needs to be able to render some of these images. Um, those of you that have seen the um, the UMAT virtual tour, um, that was developed, designed, well, that was done by a student. What he used was a software, which we call Blender. He used that software to render, to come out the with the virtual um, environment for the university. And he did that by you know, taking, I think, different pictures from different angles, putting it together and rendering it. Uh, surprisingly, he couldn't run on his computer. I think along the line, his computer crashed because um, the rendering of the images to come out of the virtual environment was consuming much of his um, CPU. His GPU was, I think, very low. On the line, his computer crashed. So what he did was um, he brought the files. I got a server from the ICT net. Um, he put the, the files there, installed the Blender software, then launched the rendering process. And Funny enough, if the process, even on the server, the rendering took a little while. I think it took some days uh, before it was, he was able to render certain scenes of the virtual environment for the humans. So that should tell you that the GPU is very much required when you are rendering heavy duty computer graphics um, related stuff or projects. But the good thing is most of the rendering that we'll be doing with open G, um, WebGL, it's not really going to, it, it is going to consume resource, but um, it's going to work with most of the laptops that most of you have. So you should have that in mind. Um, these movie makers usually render these things with very good processors, GPUs, um, to be able to do, come out with that. Um, the good thing is today's modern games um, have reached some stunning levels of realism uh, in that those are, even if you are playing FIFA or Grand Theft Auto, sometimes you wonder, or even Hitman, as you can see here, you wonder if indeed, you know, the characters really look more like humans. And day in, day out, certain things, some of these graphics, you know, um, technologies will keep coming that will enhance the feel of these objects whenever we are playing games. Um, I don't know if any of you have played this game before. Um, Super Mario, I can't say, but I'm very sure most of you have not. Um, those that have to, you, you attest to the fact that, you know, it's an old, it's an old gaming environment. And looking at the objects, this is Mario and these are like, this is, I think this is Road Rush. Um, the objects were not so realistic, but with time, you know, we had realistic objects like um, this Hitman and the rest. So that should tell you that day in day out, new things are coming in. And now the introduction of these AIs, artificial intelligence, you can see we even have um, AIs you know, generating objects for us. And by doing that, for instance, if you want to design a character, if you're able to design a character in mid-journey, you'll be able to see, the mid-journey will be able to come out with a character that you, you described just by text. So those of you that have not tried it out, you can um, check out mid-journey. It's an AI tool which is used for the generation of graphics and graphic objects. Uh, you can use it to generate some characters for yourself. And such characters can be used in, in games and the rest. 
And I'm sure most of you are aware of the the um, the popular chat G, um, GPT. Um, it's also hovering around, and there are so many things that people are doing with it. I remember I tried to ask Chat GPT to generate some some few things for me, and surprisingly, what it was generating was incredible. So you can try some of these AIs. Um, I, I expect to see some of you guys, you know, coming out with the generation of some objects in WebGL, you know, creating, using some of these AIs to create some objects in WebGL. I hope to see so many things happening this semester. All right, uh, previous years, I, I think they have been doing incredibly well. And I'm sure this, this time around, and we are going to do way better than previous years. So that is also an example of the use of computer graphics, where computer graphics is used. In simulations to um, computer graphics can also be used. Um, those that can drive, um, there are times, even in movies, there are times that if, for instance, um, we have the Microsoft Flight Simulator, what it does is, is a simula they've simulated how um, how you can learn how to fly without using the actual aircraft. So with this, it's the same way that also happens for people that would want to learn how to drive. Um, this it's it's all there. They have a simulated version of it. Some of them you would wear the three D glasses. Others, you can sit behind a giant screen computer and um, monitor and will be operating on, on the road. So with this, for instance, the Microsoft Slides, um, Flight Simulator, um, this simulation, um, you can learn how to fly the aircraft. Uh, advantages to some of these products, although these products are very expensive, there are certain advantages to them. An, an example could be um, the use of fuel you know, to learn how to drive or to learn how to fly some of these, you will need to burn a lot of fuel. So if you have an electronic version or a simulated version of these um, learning environments, what can happen is to, you can sit behind the comfort of these environments and learn how to do this driving. You can crash, you do all those, when you are perfect, then you can go on, on the road or you can fly these aircrafts. That is an, a, um, an example of a good way of using some of these simulations. And then another example would be um, accidents. Instead of crashing with a simulation, it's a crash is not in actual fact um, a realistic crash. So that can also help protect you in a way. So simulation is also, um, Computer graphics is also used in simulation to make things easier in the area of learning certain things. Now in CAD, that is the um, computer aided design and also computer aided manufacturing, CAD and CAM. We normally use these, most of these, before an object comes out, um, a product comes out, most of these, um, CAD or CAD come designers are able to model these objects. See, like this one, for instance, if this product would want to come out, they can model the objects um, to their taste before they actually, actually go in for production. So you can see over here, a bicycle. Um, can also use AutoCAD to model the bicycle and see how the simulation would really look like before you would actually go into the, um, the production of some of these products. So in CAD and CAM, um, computer graphics also is found in there. There are times where architect, architectures Architect, these are there's an architectural building. You can see before these, this particular building can even be put up, it will be good for, um, for the architect to come out with 
a 3D feel of how the building will look like. And with that, he would, he would um, know, okay, where would, how is the building going to be? So he can plan, draw the plan of the, the building, creates a realistic view of how the objects will really look like. And if those, the, those that are going to um, fund these particular projects um, are conversant with and okay with the structure that has been designed by the architects, then there's a high probability for them to push in money for the program, for the building of this, this um, for the for mounting this particular building. If not, um, people will be building, and at the end of the day, their building will be collapsing and the rest. So certain things can go into building, and we can use um, computer-aided um, design, computer-aided manufacturing, which, which is also part of computer graphics to be able to design some of these products before we start the, the building of such projects. So there is an example. And of course, now people are also using full on architecture. There are people who are also interior design. So before, if you, once the building is put up, um, we can have interior designers also simulating and also trying to find out where certain things will be placed in the room and stuff like that. These are all computer um, graphics related stuff that they put in to be able to come out. Now, this is not a, a real room. This is just a design of how a room will look like. So if the client is comfortable with this particular design, then um, the purchase of these objects, tell the, the chairs and the rest can commence for you know, the design of the room. So these are things that really happen in the architectural environment. And this is also an example. These are all designs that were made before they were put up. Um, still on architecture, this is also an office set up for um, a police station. These were done with computer graphics stuff. Now VR, virtual reality, course, most of you have, I don't know if any of you, some of you have used these products before. Um, at the mall, you know, I know there's some there where you can wear and have a feel of being in a virtual environment and playing certain games. And it's funny how some people react whenever they see some of these. Now, your A-frame projects that you probably will be creating verticals, you can see some of these goggles or um, VR headsets. If you are able to, those of you will be able to run it on your on your phone. Um, you can put it, and if you have, if you do have any of these, like Google Card or even this one, you can put your your phone screen in there, and you still will also have a feel of the object of what the object that you have created in your three D um, virtual world um, by just wearing the goggle. All right, so virtualization is also one important thing that is also talked about when you talk of computer graphics. And by visualization or virtualization, um, this technique happens when we create images, um, diagrams, and also animation to communicate a message. So during the COVID time, you remember um, at the point, um the per the data that was released by um who with respect to countries and the number of um covid cases that came out they were able to visualize and use computer graphics to based on the data that they have to generate a virtual playout like this to make it easier for us to know where um the COVID um, attack was really happening. So you can see on the left side, this is the legend or the key for a particular 
visualize a map. You can see um, the darker, the, the more redder it is, that tells you the number of people that have contract, contracted the um, COVID, the um, yeah, COVID, yeah. The more, the more it, it moves towards white, tells you how the, the less number of people that, of countries that have um, these COVID cases. So visualization is also a way to also see or create objects, um, some of these virtual objects by the use of data. This is an example. So based on data, some a graph like this is created. These are all done using computer graphics, like your Excel. This can be done with Excel. By having enough data, I mean, data you can use Excel to do this um, data visualization. And you'll be able to see um, these. The funny, the good thing is, um, you know, they keep saying a picture is worth a thousand words. Seeing this this particular picture makes it makes it easier to understand the graph. In the same vein, seeing something like this with the right legend or cases makes it easier to know that this part of this this part of the map. Have high um, is a high risk zone for COVID um, infection. So people, by the sight of this, they are able to know that this is what is really happening. Medical imagery. Um, these are other things. In fact, all these are areas where computer graphics is used. In medical imagery. It normally refers to the techniques and all the process which is used to create images of various parts of the human body. So you can see an example is the X-ray machine. Um, you can see um, this individual going into the MRI machine, which is the magnetic resonance imaging. And by this, by entering, we are able to also know certain things that is happening within um, the individual. These are all created with um, computer graphics, so x-rays and the rest in the medical environment are being created with, with the aid of computer graphics, all because of computer graphics. In the educational environment, we normally use this in teaching and we sometimes use animation like what I'm even doing right now. Um, and with this, um, the introduction of computer graphics has made it also possible for people to be at home, sitting in the comfort of their rooms and their beds, and also listening for them um, to lectures with very good internet access. So without graphical user interface and computer-related graphics, this would not be possible. Imagine um, having to um, talk to a computer using the CLI, which is the command line interface, without the graphical user interface. It makes it very difficult to even appreciate what I'm talking about. But this, you're able to see a graphic of, okay, how online lecture makes really um, feel like. G, um, GIS, that is a graphic info, info system and GPS. So all these things, you can see these objects were generated by the use of computer graphics. So a lot comes to play whenever we talk of computer graphics, and we should have all these in mind. Now, um, with this, any display, so when we talk of com the computers which um, that use OpenGL and XX to display um, any contents, um, as I said, we will not be del delving into the OpenGL and Direct um, DirectX, but these can also be used to do these generations. Um, in terms of the 2D graphics, um, we can have Illustrator and also PowerPoint also helping us to come out with data um, visualization, as you can see here. PowerPoint also is powerful enough to do that with tech for us. So virtually everything that makes it possible to see what is happening on the computer, appreciate it. Like the graphical user interface relates to computer graphics, as the name says, graphical user interface. So human um, computer interaction, that is ACI, 
which is a field that deals with the study of focusing on the design of computer technologies, also relates to computer graphics. So, as I said, in about, um, I think, so next semester or third year, you will delve much into it. You know, computer graphics has also made it possible for us to also see, to use our phone, you know, um, with the phones, we're able to see these graphic objects, like even watch movies or even listen to me talking, laptops and, and so on and so forth. So all these are possible because of that. Now, I talked about animation. So some years back, Pix, Pixma were produ was producing movies. And in such movies, there were certain things that, certain steps that they need to go through to be able to come out with not so realistic um, movies for cartoons, but somehow, okay. And these were the, some of the steps to come out with animated movies using Pixman. And those of you who have seen um, in some time back, you could see if some people could um, draw, and even now people can draw so many um, pictures and just like a book, when they are um, done drawing, they are able to flip it in a way for you to see the objects that they, they've drawn. Okay. So a movie, most of the time, animated movie, it's more, more or less just like um, so many pictures put together with maybe an audio overlay for, for us to appreciate it. So these images are put in frames and makes it easier for us to know what is happening. So Pixma, before they can come out with a the movie, these were the processes that they were going to give this slide to you. Um, they will have an idea of how the story would be. They come out with a text to treat, um, text treatment, which is written for the movie. And the voice talent, they will begin recording the voice. And virtually all the animated movies that we know, we have somebody behind who is recording the voice to make it sound more realistic. And the editor would also edit certain parts of what is happening. Um, the arts department will create the look of these objects or characters. They will add, come out with models that are sculpted and also articulated within the scenes that they are going to, um, that, that they do create. So these were all steps that they go through to be able to come out with a movie um, sometime back movie, which is um, animated movie by Pixman. Lightning, as I said, makes it easier for us to, you know, appreciate the object that is being displayed to us. So it's very key. That is why anybody who gets to hear of computer graphics, you should have linear algebra is very important. Uh, geometry, linear algebra, geometry, it's very important when you talk of computer graphics. You should be able to move an object from one point to the other. You should be able to know the principles of light. A light incidence from this an angle, uh, an angle should be able to reflect on the opposite angle. All those principles or concepts, you should have it in mind. You can't have an object with a light being incident from this angle and not casting a shadow in front of the person rather casting a shadow at the back of the person. That does not make sense. So some of these, if you look at this one, um, over here, this object, by the shadow that is being displayed here, tells you the light is being incident from this particular angle. So th these make things look more realistic in our 3D world that we see. All right, so final touches is done. So. Um, in general, um, these, so there's a movie example. So we have the modeling. You can see this is a mesh. So the creation of these objects using computer graphics um, is by geometry. We have something we call primitive by the use of lines. We use lines to, by using lines, we will be able to create objects. Um, I think as we move along, I might have something to show you in there. So this is also, um, a scene in the Microsoft um, Game Studio, Remedy Entertainment. Um, it looks a little more realistic. It looks quite nice. And so 
usually when these objects are created, we start from here, the geometry. So you can see from here, these are mesh of lines together to form these this particular object or model or this particular object. Once we have it, then we are able to add what we call texture um, to it. We're able to add texture to it. From here, we're able to add the fair or um, other things to this particular object to make it look more realistic. So that's usually the process that is go that goes through to be able to create these objects. So there are two approaches whenever we teach computer graphics. The first one is um, physics, mathematics. So the background, we should have a basic background, especially physics and math, as I said. And the main approach in, in creating computer graphic um, objects is by the use of an application like AutoCAD, um, like Blender, Maya, um, those are software or applications that you can use to generate these objects. The second is the use of libraries. So we are going to we are dealing with the use of library because we are computer science people and um, we should be able to code to talk to the GPU to create certain objects for us. And with that, we're going to use the libraries. And in which library are we using? We are using the A-frame library. So that is what we use in our practical. So, um, so these are things that you need to know. What um, we're going to do, we're going to do a level of modeling transformation. So if you have an object and I tell you translate the object or reflect the object, I'm sure you know all of these with your linear algebra class or geometry, whatever. I'm sure you are aware of these. I have some assignments for you. I'll let you have them later. So we'll deal a little bit about um, animation of some of these objects. Ray casting or ray tracing, um, ray tracing acceleration, um, global illumination, sampling, and also textures. We're adding textures to objects and the real-time graphic pipeline. I'll explain that one too as well. So there are two basic methods for image generations. First one is the ray, ray casting, which normally termed as the ray tracing. And the second one is the projective method. So these are the two basic methods for image generation. Anytime you are generating images, these are the two basic ones that you normally use. Um, the advantages and disadvantages of each of them, um, as you move along, you will get to so for ray tracing, ray casting, um, this deals with pixels. And if you recall, I was telling you that the objects that we see, so let's take this as, a, as an example. This is your computer screen. And we have a, a, an object within, inside the screen, which is in a 3D environment. And this object is a 3D objects. So it is found within inside the screen. Now with ray tracing or ray casting, how is, how is this done? How are objects formed on the screen? So the object which is inside our screen, a ray is sent from the eye. This is how we see things with the object, with the, um, in front of it, sitting behind a screen. A light, a ray is cast from your eye, a ray, light ray from your eye is cast to this, the screen. And this is done by, I told you about pixels being a building block, block of um, the object that is seen. So this ray goes into the 3D environment, virtual world, picks hits on a part of the object. If that particular part counts as a color of red, then it projects that color on the screen for us to see, like what you see in here. Using the same analogy here, I think this is more clearer. Light ray comes out of your eye, goes into the object which is found in a 3D environment inside the screen. These are how th um, these objects um, are created and made look more realistic 
like a 3D object. So the ray moves um, from the screen, goes into the virtual environment, take that particular picture, um, um, the color of the object in the 3D world and project it on, on the screen. So if the color is red on the objects, it projects it on the screen. And of course, if there is light incident on it, the color, the, if the object is red and there is a light incident or incident on that particular object, it gives different shades of red. So all of these rays will be moved on each of these objects and each of them will be represented on this 2D screen in, on here. So construct a ray from the eye for every object in the scene. So this is the scene inside the screen. Um, you find an intersection with the ray, keep it, um, keep if um, closet, closet. So you bring it in here, go, the, the rays are cast for all of these objects and it will be shown on this 2D screen over here. So that is how um, ray tracing really works. And um, I talked about the shading. So for to get a photorealistic um, images like um, the ray tracing, the, the ray tracing algorithm is used, and I, that is how I, what I just explained. So you compute a ray, a, a ray from a viewpoint, which travels through the pixel of the screen to the 3D environment, bring the color, bring it over here. So if the object is red here, and this object is red, and there is another object here in front of this red, let me see. Yeah, so if this object, okay, is here, and there's another object in here, like green, there's a green object, and this is an opaque object. You know what opaque objects are? Light does not pass through, and this is a transparent object. So if this is a glass, which is of color green, and we have the ray being cast from the eye from here to this particular object, which is this object. What do you think will be the color of the pixel that will be shown in here? Anyone? What do you think will be the color of the of the pixel that will be shown on the screen. There is an object here, which is um, transparent. There is an object at the back of the object, which is transparent, but is red and it's opaque. If a ray is cast from the eye from here, the eye from here, to the 3D world to be displayed on the, on the screen, what color would be for this particular object that will be shown here. What is the color of the object that will be shown here? Anyone, you can raise your hand. Anyone? I hope you understand my question. All right. Okay, Bernard Ephraim, I think you can you can unmute yourself. Bernard Ephraim, you are muted. Can you speak? Anyone? Yes, Kwame Dakwa. 
All right, you can't unmute yourself. Sir Red. Come again. Red. Red? Yeah, you can see red over there. Uh, not quite. No. You, yeah, no, anyone else? The object, okay. The object, as I showed you earlier, this object is red. And there is a green, not so transparent. The opacity for the green object is, um, um, let's say, 70. And this object is in front of the red. What will be the color of the object of the pixel that will be shown on the screen in here? Okay, I can see some other hands. Eugene, you can unmute yourself. Eugene, you can unmute yourself and talk. All right, Samuel. Um, Violet. Violet. <laughs> Why do you say Violet? Very, very black. Hey, maybe I don't know. Black. <laughs> OK, I'm going to show you this. I want to. Okay, so all right, so let me bring this here. All right, those of if you can see this, let me use this one rather so you can see it well. Okay. So the object is red. There is another object in front of the red. The light is instant from the eye. The eye, the eye is projected from the eye through this object, through the screen to the object. So it will first hit the green, which is a little transparent. So an object which is transparent has, light can pass through an object which is transparent. So it means it's going to pick um, a portion of the, a particular color, which is green, but in a mild way. And it will combine the green with this object's color, which is what, red. So a combination of red and green is what will be shown on the screen here. So looking at this, you can see this is red, this is green. So the objects that will be formed will fall somewhere in here. Somewhere to be a shade of red and also a shade of um, green. Um, just hold on for a second. Let me attend to see someone. So, um, so we're going to get a shade of that color, as I said. So it'll be a combination of red and also green. So that is the color that will be displayed over here. All right, so we have just some few minutes to go. So these are examples of objects that were created using ray tracing. Um, but it's, of course, I told you they have, 
it has its advantage and disadvantage too as well. So from here, ray tracing generally because it's able to give out very good realistic images. Um, it's a little slow whenever it goes through the rendering process. And this is an example of also another object that was created with ray tracing. You see how beautiful it looks like. Um, so that is an example of what ray tracing can do and how objects created with ray tracing are able to look so realistic. The office, the police office I showed you earlier also is of the same vein. It's also created with ray tracing. And these are examples of objects that were created. So now for your first exercise, I would want you to um, briefly explain how computer graphics is integrated in these three areas. The HCI, IV, information visualization, and also image processing. Um, this is going to be an assignment put on the VLE. I would want you to load, there'll be a deadline for it. Um, I'm going to check for plagiarism as well. Um, so research, get your information right and load it. Um, the deadline for this would be today is Monday, Friday. Um, Friday before we have our morning lecture. So just get with yourself ready for the, the solving of this um, write-up. I need I don't need anything more than two pages maximum. A page is okay. If you go a little beyond a page, that's also fine. So that is um, the assignment for you. So get yourself ready. I would put it up on the VLE too as well. Um, so the next time we meet, we'll talk about a projective method, which is this one. So get yourself ready. And let's meet. Those of you that say you have issues with the network, I will want to meet you in class at 12.30 to 2.30. If, I, if you don't come, then it means you are okay with the VLE. All right, let's call it a morning. Thank you very much. I'll meet you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, boy. Hello. Hello. Hey, you. Fala. It's be worse. Later on, you, you won't be worse than ours. I was. Fala. 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 <laughs> okay, no, a nice okay. Okay. <laughs> one, one day or something. No, okay. We we'll call it a morning. Okay, we we'll call it a morning. Put in now. I need a good one. Now we will call it a night. Let me down. Let me show you. Let me show you. Let me Oh yes, I will do. Okay, then okay. Hello, Okay, Last week. Yes. Oh, today we will call it a morning. Ah, ah, how is he knowing that? You know here. Hello, what do you do? What is it for?